Here I want to show you the function called dsum. And dsum is one that I like because I am a, a visual person. So it helps me get a clearer understanding of what's going on with my formulas. And I also like to use it if I'm passing an Excel spreadsheet off to someone else. That way it's easy for them to be able to change the formulas around if they need to as well. In certain cases, like this one. So here you see on the left hand side we've got the table. And it's the same table that I used in the sum if and sum ifs lectures. So I've got my records here for individual orders that were placed by certain employees, the product that was sold in that orders, and the price. Now, the total amount of sales right now for all the orders together is $2,675. But let's say I wanted to know just Scott's total sales altogether. So what I can do here is I go into the employee section and I've created a drop down. Now I have a whole lecture in this course about how to create drop down, so definitely take a look for that if you don't know how to do it already. So from this list I have all of my employees and I'm looking for Scott. So once I click on that you'll see that the total sales updates and I can see that Scott sold $700 worth of products. I'll switch that over to Jane. We see here that Jane sold $750, Teresa $500, and Joy $725. All right, so let's say that I wanted to know how much Joy sold as far as product number 789. So I can go over to product, which is also a drop down, and choose 789. And she sold $350 worth of 789. Or what if I just want to know the total amount sold from all of my salespeople for 789? I can click on Joy and hit delete on my keyboard and I can see that $875 was sold worth of 789 products. And all this is done by using the dsum function. Let me show you how I set it up. I'll go ahead and actually get rid of my product here first, take it back to the total, and click and open this up with an F2. All right, so dsum, I've got three different required sections. Now I'm going to go through the formula with you and then I'll retype it again. But I want to show you with my, what my sections are. The first one is the database, the table that I'm going to be working with that stores all the information that I'm going to be running different criteria off of. So that table is blue here. You can see that's highlighted. It's B4 through E19. And I also could have named this. I could have named this uh, order table, something like that. Now I want to sum up the price, and the price is in the fourth column, so that's that number four there. Now I could have also typed in the word price, because that's the name of my column. And then lastly, the last required section, it's asking me, okay, so you've got your table, you've got what you want to sum up, what's the criteria that I'm looking for to sum up? And the criteria is going to be anything that's inside of, in this case, H4 through I5. Remember, that's where I had my employee drop down and my product drop down. All right, I'm going to go ahead and backspace this out so again you can see it. So that's equals D sum. Again, it's asking for the database, and you want to make sure that you get your headers in here with the table information, comma, which field, so which column do I want to sum up, and I can either type in price or the number four, because it's the fourth column, comma, and then what's the criteria that I'm looking for? So I'm going to be looking for employees and products. So I'm grabbing the headers as well as the boxes underneath it, the cells underneath it that have my drop downs. All right, I'll go ahead and click on enter. And again, I have my total there for the entire table because I don't have criteria right now. So I'll click on my little drop down and choose Scott. And again, there's my 700. So three things that you need. You need a table. You need to tell it what column you're going to be summing from that table. And then you need to have criteria somewhere in your worksheet or in your workbook. It could even be on a different worksheet. It doesn't matter. But you need to have the criteria somewhere to tell Excel what it is that you want to sum up from that table or from that database. Now, I've been using AND conditions so far, right? I said look up Scott and maybe product one, two, three. So what Scott has sold of product one, two, three.
But let me show you this. I'll go ahead and move my sails down a bit. And this time, maybe, and I don't have a little drop down here, but maybe I'll also put in Jane. And I'm going to change my formula a little bit. Instead of H4 through I5 for my criteria, I'm going to make it H4 through I6. So by doing this, I'm actually telling Excel to look for Scott's 123 sales or Jane's sales, all of her sales, because I'm not putting a product in there. So now when I hit enter, I have 1050. So let me get rid of Scott to show you what that is again. So starting from scratch, if I have Jane here, and let's say Scott here, so Jane and Scott all together sold $1,450 worth of product. Remember we saw Scott sold $700 and Jane sold $750? Now what if I want to see Jane's sales, but just Jane's one, two, three sales? Now it's even lower because you might remember from the sum ifs lecture, Jane sold $300 worth of one, two, three. I could say Jane's one, two, three sales and Scott's one, two, three sales. See, now it's 600. I can extend my criteria a little bit more and put in a third person. It's up to you. But the reason that I like DSUM is because not only does it give me my information that I need really quickly, but since I have the criteria listed on the worksheet, I can also see how that formula is built.